Okay, so a nice tasty vectors question. Uh, Ian and Grant are swimming in the ocean. Uh, tells us some coordinate locations, uh, velocity vectors, right? And so it makes sense maybe just to draw a little sketch of this. You don't have to, to answer part A. Find vector equations of the motion of each swimmer. Uh, so that's like finding the position vectors, right? Or the vector equation of the lines. Uh, but I think I might just draw a picture of it, right? So let's just try and make this as clean as possible. So. Let's do two colours. Um, Ian is at 9, 7. So, I mean, again, this is just roughly. It's not, I'll put this as, as I. This is starting point for Ian. And Grant is at negative 3, 2. So Grant is at negative 3, 2. And there's Grant. And there he is. Oh, let me just get my pen to go. Okay, Ian and Grant. Oops. There we go. And so let's go back to the velocity vectors. So this velocity vector here, 0.6 in the x direction and negative 0.5 in the y direction. Um, so I, again, you know, it's just kind of like a, a, a ratio of proportion. So 0.6 along and 0.5 down. It's nearly a one-to-one. -one, so this is the idea. Okay, just roughly. And then we go back to um, Grant. It's 0.7 and 0.3, okay, so 0.7 along and 0.3 up, you know, like a 2 to 1 ratio. Again, just approximately, just approximately. So this is the idea. Fantastic. So you can see that this will be the, the line would keep going like this, only in one direction. Uh, technically, it's called a ray, and this would happen here. Okay? And every second, obviously, they're a certain distance apart. You can see clearly, can't you, that the initial, to the initial distance apart is this, right? And after one second, it's kind of, you've got this idea, right? These are the distances apart after, um, you know, multiple seconds. So let's go and answer the question. So A here, and we've got Ian, and we've got Grant, all right? And we're going to put R, R of I, position vector of Ian, and R of G. Now remember, these are the X, Y position coordinates, and this is the X, Y position coordinates, um, yeah, uh, position vector, sorry, from the origin. So th this is why we're going to put R of I and R of G. And R of I is easy. It's basically we, we hop out to 9, 7. It's going to have a vector journey out to any point on Ian's line, and that's his starting point. And then we add on blocks of seconds times by uh, the velocity vector. Right, so that kind of makes sense, right? Oh, my bad. It's a positive there. And then the same for Ian, we hop out to the location negative 3, 2. We travel along to the starting position. And every second is a travelling of 0 0.7, 0 0.3. So there you go. There's the, um, there's the vector equations for the motion. Quite simple, right? Uh, find the distance between Ian and Grant after 2 seconds and 10 seconds. So now we're into the, we're into the world of um, Pythagoras, right? So we're into the world of Pythagoras and the distance between two points. So Pythagoras, distance between two points. Um, it might, might be easier to write down the x. Oh, my bad. Here's Ian. We'll put Ian here. And the x coordinate equals 9 plus 0 0.6t. And the y coordinate equals 7 minus 0 0.5t. That's Ian. And over here is Grant. Right, and Grant uh, x equals negative uh, three plus zero point seventy, and y equals two plus zero point three t. Okay, uh, so that's great, and and I'm actually going to do part C. I'm going to do part C first, right? And you'll you'll see the reason why. Um, certainly, part B. Basically, you're just going to substitute. 2 and 10 into the um, parametric equations, and you're going to get some coordinates, then you do Pythagoras, basically, to find the distance between them. But for part C, we are going to need an equation and find the shortest distance. So I'm going to draw a graph for this one. So I'm going to do part C first. All right, so part C, uh, distance, the Pythagorean formula is the square root of y2 minus y1 squared and plus x2 minus x1 squared, okay? So we'll do 2 plus 0.3t, y2 minus y1. And 
that's all squared, plus uh, x2. minus x1 and that's all squared right now of course that can all simplify um, but I'm just going to go straight now to my ti inspire I'm going to type this in as a function and of course if we want to minimize that particular overall value we just want to find the minimum point on the graph okay so let's make this quite big uh, doc insert a new graph okay so I'm going to take my time with this, control, square root, and now this is going to be a bracket, bracket, so two brackets, right? And it's 2 plus 0 0.3 uh, x, right? So that's the x2 uh, minus, oh, this is the y2, right? Minus, open bracket, uh, 7 minus 0 0.5x, close bracket, close bracket, squared. It's a bit fiddly, but you've got to take your time. Plus, and now x2 minus x1, so plus, open bracket, open bracket, um, negative 3, plus 0 0.7x, close bracket, um, minus, open bracket, 9 plus 0 0.6x, close bracket, close bracket, squared. Okay, yeah. I think I've hit all the right buttons. I mean, obviously, it's fiddly, right? So it's always worth putting down some working out actually on your exam page. Because if you don't write anything down and just type it on the calculator and get the wrong answer, you've got zero marks for method, right? So it's worth writing down at least the minimum um, as I did on the sheet. So we press enter. And we don't see anything there, and that's that's okay, right? So, control T. Now, this is the magic that I want to show you. Now, can you see that actually, when we go back to the question, the question for C, oh, let me just check the question out here. So, the question for B part one wants to know the distance after two seconds and 10 seconds. So, can you see that actually, from our table of values, all we have to do now is look up two and 10. So that's a nice little shortcut, right? So after two seconds, you can see clearly the distance between them is 12.28. And after 10 seconds, the distance between them is 11.4. And you can see, can't you, that there's some kind of minimum maybe around, around here, about eight, nine seconds. And the great thing about doing control T, you now know how to rescale your axes. So I'm gonna go control T to toggle off the table. And then I'm going to do a cheeky little shortcut, right? I'll just go up to 20 here. And I'll just go up to 20 here. And you can clearly see there's a there's a minimum point, right? So menu, analyze graph, minimum. Look there. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's an exact number of seconds. After eight seconds, the, they are at a minimum distance. They're closest uh, that they're going to be to each other, 11.3. So let's just go transfer all of those down to, to the iPad. Um, just so we know we've got the answers all in one place. And so the final part is eight seconds. So this is eight seconds. And the distance between them was 11.3. Is this, this is meters, right? Uh, I'm just having a quick look here. Uh, meters and meters per second, yeah. So 11.3 meters apart, so quite close. And then if we do control T one more time, we make a note now of these answers, right? Um, so B part one, after two seconds, it's 12.3 meters apart. And part two, after 10 seconds, we are 11.4 meters apart. Let's go back to here. So we can see the we can see the full set of answers there. All right, so you can just cross check, make sure you've got the correct answers. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the best way of approaching that question. There are other methods, um, but they're more AA methods and kind of non-calculator methods. Maybe um, I just like you know using that distance formula. That distance formula is given in the form in the book, but it's just the distance between two points using um, coordinate um, coordinate points, right? 
I hope that helps.